Okay, so today, welcome back, welcome back. We are going to learn about, oops, wrong color. Uh, let's try and change that color. We're going to learn about constant acceleration. Last period we learned about constant velocity. But let's do a little bit of review first because let's do review of constant velocity really quickly, okay? So the the equation that we were able to get from constant velocity was that we had df equals vt plus di. Now, of course, this was in the form of the equation y equals mx plus b. So we know that this equation is, in fact, a straight line equation. It's linear. And when we plotted it, we plotted it like this, d and t. And let's assume that di is 0, so we're going to get something that looks like that. It's a straight line. And then when we drew our VT graph, we knew that this is going to be a horizontal line. Since the slope going this way is the value, so the slope here is equal to the value here, then since it's a constant slope, the slope here is the same as it is here as it is here, we know that the value has to be constant. So for example, if this slope was a 5, now that's, that would be meters per second. We now know that the value here would be 5. And of course, this, these units are meters per second for the velocity. But what we didn't look at was the acceleration. So the acceleration, let's draw that here. And that always, by the way, goes below. So the the order in which you draw your graphs I I don't want you so let me just kind of pull this over a little bit here I'll show you what I don't want you to do I don't want you to make your graphs like this DT uh, VT AT this I don't want you to do this why because they're not vertical the, the graphs are horizontal and also I don't want you to do them out of order. Let's say, for example, if you went V and then D. Uh, oops. Okay, so let's pull this up a bit. Let's say you went uh, D and then A. That's that's the wrong that's the wrong order. It it should always be D first and then V second and then A comes at the bottom, always with respect to time. That's what I want. So that's wrong too, but this one is correct. Okay, I always want it to be that way. And there's a reason, and we'll discuss that later on as we're going through it. So let's go back to um, our lesson. And so this one is going to be acceleration versus time. Now the same rule that applies, the slope is equal to the value, also applies to this one. It's the same thing. In this case, if we go down here, the slope of this graph is equal to the value of this one. So you can see that this horizontal line has a slope of zero, therefore, the value here, and I can, let me change colors real quick. I could, let's say, pick red here. And I know that this graph, therefore, is going to be along the 
horizontal axis and I made it thick there in red you can see so in essence the slope here is zero that's zero meters per second squared that's the slope because if let me shift back to black here if the units are meters per second per second we get meters per second squared for the slope and therefore this is this unit of course is meters per second squared but zero slope zero value they're equal okay so now that we've analyzed and once again i'm saying that this is review the only part that we did not look at in the last lesson was the acceleration part so th this part is now kind of a new part but the d and the v should be review from before again this is constant velocity but today we're going to be learning about constant acceleration so how is this different well let's kind of move over here a little bit and let's take a look at the definition of acceleration acceleration is the rate of change in velocity rate of change in velocity that means the equation would be acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T that equation right there is the rate of change that's change in velocity and the rate of is per unit time we can now rearrange this equation solving for delta V and say it's equal to a T and then we can change delta V into V final minus V initial equals a T and now we can write down the equation V equals a T plus V I now guess what we have a linear equation just like we had before except notice that the two linear equations the one for constant velocity was a little different it was here it was this one notice this one the slope is v here right in y equals mx plus b form and in this one if i write y equals mx plus b just so that you can recognize where the slope is then you should recognize that the slope is the a also recognize that this is a v versus t graph whereas for constant velocity it was a d versus t graph that means the linear line in constant velocity was this graph the first one whereas for constant acceleration now we see that the linear line is the VT graph so let's draw the graphs again we've got the DT graph here and remember we always draw them in this order here's my VT graph pull it up a bit here and now it's from this equation here it's this one that is the straight line and again I'm gonna assume that VI in this case is zero since it's going through the origin now if we use the same rules as we did before to draw the remaining graph I can push it up a bit now, let me write the equation here again V final equals AT plus VI. Now if I draw the AT graph, I can use this same rule where I can say, hey, 
the slope of this one is equal to the value of this one. So obviously now this is a positive slope and you should be able to decipher or determine that therefore this is going to be a positive value and it's going to be a constant value. Why? Because it's a constant slope. It's the same concept that we did except now we're doing it in a different location. You see, we, it's the same concept we did here, but before we were doing it from dt to vt, now we're doing it from vt to at. So the one that's missing now is the one above, the dt is missing. We'll get there in a minute. Let's just say, for example, that this, uh, erase that little dot there. Let's just say that this has a slope of 2 meters per second squared. That means now that this, if that's the slope of this line here in the VT, that means our value here is going to be 2. Again, units for acceleration meters per second squared. Now if we, I want to kind of also show you the data table for this. So if I was, for example, um, to draw out um, the velocity, understand that for an acceleration of 2 meters per second, if I have V and T, initially at time 0, my velocity is going to be 0. Then one second later, my velocity is going to increase. So for an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, that means one second later, and remember what 2 meters per second squared is. It's like 2 meters per second per second. So therefore, my velocity is going to be 2 meters per second after one second. After another second, it's going to change by another 2. So I'm going to get to 4. After another second, it's going to change by 2 again to 6. And after another second, it's going to change by another 2. So my velocity is going to be 8. So if I was to plot this now, you could see that if I went 1, 2, 3 here, I'm gonna co it's going to correspond to the values of at 1 second we're at 2, at 2 seconds we're at 4, and at 3 seconds we're at 6. So I hope that's clear in terms of the definition of acceleration. And this is the this here is the graph of the acceleration. But now what we want to do is we want to be able to figure out what does the dt graph look like. Now in order to do this, we need to go back and see if we can figure out what the relationship was going up. In other words, if you remember what we discussed from the previous lesson uh, about, let's say for example, if this was um, 5 meters per second and let's say this was 2 seconds here. Remember, we calculated the area of the graph under the VT and this is now a rectangle and we all know how to calculate the area of a rectangle it's just width times height so 5 times 2 is 10 that means we know that at 2 seconds and this is another reason why it's nice to draw vertical lines right or sorry to draw your graphs vertically is that you can draw a vertical line and get to the same time at this point 
we know that the dt must be at 10 because it should equal the area up to that point. And remember, areas above the origin are positive, areas below the origin are negative. So we learned this before, but, and remember, if I draw an arrow for this, going in this direction, area here is equal to uh, position here. Okay? So, or you could say area equals the value instead of position. It makes sense to say position for, <coughs> for dt because that's what it is. That is the value. Okay? We could say value here. Position is specific to the dt. So now, if we come back over here and I can change my uh, color. Let me change my color here. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, let's pick, for example, oops. That, that didn't work out. Let me try that again. Let's try taking red. Let's calculate this area here. Notice that after one second, what type of a shape is that? Now that's not a rectangle, that's a triangle. And you should know that the area of a triangle is equal to, that's not delta, that's a triangle is equal to the base times the height divided by 2. Now in this case, if we go base times height, that's 1 times 2, divided by 2, that's 1. So now watch what I'll do. I'll come to this point. Oh, let me change colors again. Yeah, I come to this point, and that's 1 second. Okay. And therefore, now, I got to be careful here because I have to make sure that my divisions here on my dt are big enough. So let's take the big triangle. 6 times 3 divided by 6 times 3 is 18, divided by 2 is 9. So let me give myself 10 graduations here. So let me go like this. Here's 2, 4, 6, 8. 10. Approximately. I know I'm not using a ruler to measure these out. In fact, I, I, I didn't do a very good job of having equidistance for each one. However, I know that this little triangle's area is 1. So I'll go to 1 and I'll put a dot right there. Okay? There's my dot. Then I'll go to the next triangle and I can change colors again. And remember, this is not just the area of this region here, but it's the whole triangle all the way, the big one, from 0 to 2 up to 4. So that the area there is 4 times 2, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4. So now I'll come over here, let's go back to black, and approximately at two seconds, we're at four. Okay, and by the way, we also have a point here at zero, zero. Then let's go to three seconds, and again, this one, now we have to take all this the whole thing. 3 times 6, 18 divided by 2 is 9. So now I'll come over here to 9. Right about there. And there's my 3. And so now you see, this is definitely not a linear line. In fact, now the the 
the physics here kind of boils down to a little bit of an art form because I want to be able to draw a curve from this point, zero, to, to the three second point, but I want that curve to include all the lines. Now a good way to do this, it's much harder on a graphics tablet as I'm doing it, but on paper, usually what you want to do is you want to put your hand at point zero and move your hand without drawing a couple times to make sure that you're going to get a good curve to practice it. Now I'm, I'm really, this is much more difficult for me because I'm not on paper here. And if I draw it, there's the curve. It's, I did okay there. Uh, as I said, it's more difficult for me on this digital paper. So now you can see this is, this is not a straight line, it's a curve. And I was able to get it by using the concept of going up where my area here, or maybe I could actually, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put that arrow over on this side just so that it doesn't interfere with this arrow. So I'll say area here is equal to the value here, right? Equals. So now I, I'm able to draw the DT graph, but there's one other kind of characteristic that I want to share with you. And that is, what about the rule that we discussed earlier where we say the slope equals the value going down? So does that work in this situation here? If I go from here back down, if I go from the DT graph to the VT graph, can I still say slope is equal to the value on this side. Well, in order to do this, we have to learn a different con um, a different mathematical concept. Okay? And that's called a tangent. All right, let's take a look at the concept of a tangent. We need, that we need to kind of brush up a little bit on our math skills here to remember what a tangent is. And the tangent really is a line which is perpendicular. I'm not going to spell that out. I'll just go like this. Well, actually, here it is. Let's see if I can do this. Per pen dicular to the, this is, this is like a math symbol. It's just like uh, vertical two lines that are 90 degrees and then you put a little right, uh, right angle den denotation there. Tangent is a line which is perpendicular to the radius of curvature. So, uh, well, we all know what a radius is, right? So it's like if you have a circle, a bad circle, bad circle, and if you draw a radius to any point on the line, then, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm just struggling with this tablet here. There, that's better. So that line is tangent to this point right there because it's perpendicular, you can see, to the radius of curvature. If I had another point, let's just do one more here. And now, here is the radius. And let's see if I can do this line here. Not too bad. OK. So that's perpendicular. So that's the concept of it. But now, of course, you know, drawing lines that are perpendicular to a radius is easy when it's a circle. What if it's not a circle? So here is, oh my goodness, I'm really struggling here. 
Let's try. I'm trying to draw a sine curve. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Uh, let me try that one more time. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'll, 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 I can live with that. So let's take this point right there. Then the tangent to that point. So the radius of curvature, what would be the, if I kind of drew a circle like that, uh, I kind of messed it up on this edge here, but there's the tangent. Let's take a point right here, say for example. And so in this case, I'm not even gonna draw the circle because it's gonna be much, much, much bigger, right? This circle is gonna be like, well, okay, I will do it. It's gonna be something like that, or bigger maybe, but there, there's the line. That's not bad, okay? So the concept here is a tangent line just touches the line. It doesn't cut through the line, and it, um, it's perpendicular to the radius of curvature at that point in the line. Okay, so now that we understand the concept of a tangent, let's go back. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find the tangent at this point at one second. So if I draw this line, uh, maybe I should use a different color here. Let's pick, uh, let's pick a, a green maybe. Okay, so, or how about this green? This is like brighter. So in this case, the tangent would be like that. And then let's pick this point here, and the tangent would be like that. And the tangent up here would be like that. Now, each of these line segments has a slope. We can calculate the slope by going rise divided by run. So we just draw a triangle for each one. Now if you did that, you should notice, now it's hard for me to do this calculation, but I mean, we can, I can, it's obviously not going to be very accurate because I'm not doing this on graph paper. If we did this on graph paper, it'd be much more accurate. But what you'll find is, so I just want to reiterate here what these uh, values are. Let's just use, let's say, uh, let's use this nice blue here. This is the rise, and this, that's the run. And to calculate the slope of this line, all we'd have to do is go rise divided by run. And at that point, therefore, that would give us the slope at that point right there. And if you do that, you should get a value of approximately, now, just you can pause the video here for a second and think about what this answer should be. At three seconds, what should the slope of this point be? Remember the rule is going down, the slope is equal to the value. So therefore, at that point, we're going to be right there. And so the slope should be six. Okay? And therefore, if we take the same concept and say, okay, what about this point here at two seconds? If you do rise divided by run, and you, you should get 
approximately four. Same thing for this one. Notice these slopes are steeper as we go to the right. For one second, the slope should be two. Okay? And in fact, um, it's pretty close to it. I mean, obviously, this isn't graph paper, but I've done the best I could with, uh, with the graphics tablet. Right. One thing I may have kind of glossed over is to calculate the slope. I'm actually calculating the slope, the rise divided by the run. So, for example, in this situation, let's try to calculate this one here. If I went dot, 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 that point, you can see that's about, let's say, 5.5. And this point is maybe dot, dot, dot. Let's say that's 2.5. So to calculate the slope of this triangle here, it would be 5.5 minus 2.5 divided by, now, here it's approximately, let's say, 2, and this is uh, 2.75. So it would be 2.75 minus 2, approximately. Okay, so yeah, uh, I was actually pretty lucky with getting, get. I mean, because I'm not using graph paper once again, and uh, I got pretty lucky with those numbers. This is exactly four, okay? And, and so that, that works out because at two seconds, okay, or at this point in time, if we go down, actually, well, it would, it actually, I did it kind of wrong because the left-hand side of this triangle here would have been less than two. So I'm still not doing this perfectly. It should have been less than two here. So so this number should have been less than two. But nonetheless, uh, I'm just gonna go with it. So that means right here at two seconds, we're at four meters per second, and that's slow. And remember, what what are the units here? The units here are meters, and the units here are seconds, so we got four meters per second, which is a velocity. And so it corresponds to that velocity right there.